Greetings fellow teachers. I'm here today to talk to you about some of the reasons I am a TEA member. All right. Um, I realize it can seem like a lot of money, but what you get out of it is amazing. So um, I'm going to talk about a couple of things. I started off in the Thompson School District 20 years ago. Um, I came, I taught at UNC for four years and then I came to the Thompson School District. And so when I first came in, at first I was a little hesitant, but I went with it. Um, partly because I feel like a part of being a TEA member is about social justice. I think labor unions are a part of our, it makes a statement and it carries a, a social justice meaning behind it. And I felt that way as a social studies and English teacher. But part of it also was I'd worked darn hard to become a teacher and I didn't want something to mess with that. You know, I didn't want a stupid mistake on my part um, to become the end of a career that I worked really hard to get to. So there's a couple basic reasons. So anyway, this story goes back to when I was first teaching. I'm pretty sure it was my second year of teaching at, in Thompson. So my first 15 years, I taught at Ferguson High School. And early on teaching at Ferguson High School, I had a principal who had also previously been a TEA member while he was a teacher and was very, and even an association rep. So my principal, my second principal, one of my principals had been an outstanding um, principal, but we all make mistakes and we all make misjudgments. And I think that's the important thing to understand with this is you can have a great administrator, great staff, great people, and still the wrong judgment can be made. And so what happened basically is he, um, I had a student, she had come to us, I was working with at-risk students at Ferguson High School, which is the alternative high school in the Thompson School District. And this young lady had come, she was from a different state. She was living with her aunt and uncle in Loveland to get her out of her previous situation. Um, I might get emotional talking about this. We'll see if I can get through this. But she had come from a, a brutal rape. And so she had been was suffering from some really serious trauma and PTSD. And this young woman, like, for example, she would go through these phases of slamming her head on a table um, to a point where you couldn't believe someone could actually do that to themselves um, until she was restrained. She had some really serious trauma. And this young lady um, one day came to me and had and pulled me in the hallway and said, you know, it was like, I've made a serious mistake. Um, and she was scared and she was shaking. And she was holding a razor blade. And I proceeded to take the razor blade away from her. Um, it was not entirely voluntary, I'll say at that moment, but there was obviously she brought me into the hallway to talk to me about it. So there was a degree of like looking for help. Um, in any case, I took her to the administrator, administrator. After I got the razor blade away from her, I took her down to my administrator's office. We discussed what had happened and everything. The counselor wasn't in the building at that moment. Um, it was a very small building, 70 students at that time. And so she, or he, the principal at that time, he um, spent most of the morning with her, you know, um, and for some reason I'll never understand, you know, between the incident and going to his office, I think it was something about being afraid of being in front of an administrator, but, you know, or not wanting to make a bad impression, you know. So in any case, I, he started, he tried processing things with her and made a judgment call to let her kind of go back to class. Uh, and she didn't, you know, and he should have, you know, taken a lot more, you know, everyone knows he probably should have taken some different steps, but we all make bad judgment calls at times. So I wasn't blaming him for that. Um, Meanwhile, I didn't know what had happened. It was a Friday. I went home. Um, she left. And I called the aunt on Saturday and said, well, you know, how's she doing? Blah, blah, blah. Here's what happened. The aunt knew nothing about it. So the aunt and the uncle rallied around her. 
And to make a long story short, she ended up in a mental health institution for two weeks for her own safety. And hard to say it may or may not have saved her life, but they certainly determined enough of, of a problem to keep her there for two weeks. They didn't release her right away like they usually would in those, you know, after a weekend or something. And all was maybe well, um, except the aunt and uncle uh, charged, try, try, threatened, they were going to sue the school district for what had happened. Um, and me in particular. And another teacher that kind of was involved, you know, they were going to go after both of us. And she was also a TEA member, by the way. And, you know, it was a pretty scary situation. I was a first year teacher. The district at the end of that year could have very easily let me go. Um, they didn't. Because what happened, as it turns out, is when I turned to the TEA for help, they had a CEA lawyer, Colorado Education Association lawyer, who deals with these kinds of crazy situations all day long. He contacted the family, reached out to the family, and without any lawsuit at all, got them to understand, you know, his position and their position, and in a very sympathetic way, got them to, um, and careful way, got them to back off and they dropped the lawsuit. Um, and so it was one of those situations where being an association member probably saved my job because I think if there had been a lawsuit as a probationary teacher against me, I probably would have been done that year. Um, and certainly my administrator would have been done. And, you know, so it was a, a good thing. It really paid off and it really helped me. And so, it, you know, sometimes those really awful things, sometimes the TEA isn't just about negotiation, nego negotiating for your pay raise. Um, it isn't just about making sure that all student, that students will also be required during COVID to wear masks in school. It isn't about those simple things. Sometimes those big picture things, sometimes it's about helping you in a particular situation during a particular crisis and really getting an expert to make sure that you continue to do what we all love to do, which is teach, teach our students. Um, anyway, welcome to the Thompson School District. Thanks for listening.